Hey, welcome back another day, another vlog. Hope you're all well today, uh, Thursday afternoon. Been a decent sort of day. I crashed pretty much last night. I wasn't feeling 100%, so I didn't even attempt to really sit down and do anything. Yeah, I think I need a rest. I, I just laid in bed and watched the new episode of uh, Yellowstone. I don't know if you've watched that show on Stan, but it is awesome. Uh, new series three? Three's out, I think it is. Yeah, I think series three with, um, or two, with uh, Kevin Costner in it. It's very cool, some just beautiful scenery. Um, some amazing landscapes there in Montana. I'm assuming, I think it's filmed in Montana, but it's basically based on Montana uh, ranches and stuff like that and what it's like, what it's all about there. So very cool. If you haven't watched it, definitely go and watch it. Uh, it's sort of like uh, I pin it to a new version of Dallas or Dynasty. If you remember watching those in, the, in their heyday, it's basically a new version of that. And very, very well done, so definitely go check that out. Um, today, news-wise, going to shoot straight into it because I want to go for a run tonight. I'm feeling, going to get some exercise. I think that might do me some good, make me feel a little bit better. Just feel just a bit blah at the moment. So need to do some exercise and try and maybe get the body awake and back to doing some doing some stuff, I guess. But, uh, I think he's sort of... Once you stop running and do all that stuff, it's sort of very easy just for your body just to start switching off and get a little bit lazy and not as healthy as it should be. So I thought I'd do that. Um, ICAST today, there was some good things out of Shimano. Um, so I'll go through them first. Now, they did win um, Fresh Saltwater Best Reel uh, for their class with the Vanford series of uh, spinning or bait cast, egg flip, whatever you call egg egg beater, whatever you call them. Um, 3,000 and up, it does have the cross carbon drag, so that's probably a bit more suited to, I guess, the barramundi and stuff like that, or light offshore or inshore sort of stuff for Australia. Um, most, it's obviously more of fresh water and it'll be good for like the brim and stuff like that. Really well priced. Um, I think they were like in the 99 to to $100 mark. So not, not an expensive reel, but a lot of the really good gear, all the top level specs. So it's got a Garni body, it's water resistant, uh, it's got the good bearings, it's got all that. So a lot of that stuff out of that Stella range, filtering now down to the bottom products. So if you think Stella four to five years ago, well, probably you'd say you'd see a lot of that filter down into this, this model. And I think that's why it's one best in class. <clears throat> Because, yeah, it's just a really well-made reel, and I think it'll do really well. Um, I think they go up to a 5,000 for these, so really good little inshore if you're into, into that style of fishing. Definitely go check it out. Um, I think they won't be... Well, they'll, they'll sell a fair few of these. I'd say they'll come to Australia as well. What brand name they'll come under, that's, again, the tricky part with trying to interpret the iCar show. Obviously, it's the biggest show in the world and they show off all the new technologies, but for whatever reason, most of these companies change their brand names when they come to Oceana and whatever, for whatever reason, so we do have to sort of cross it over. But it did, look, it's, it looks like a really good reel and it's a good sort of entry price reel with a lot of really good tech in it, so go check that out. Um, also, they won Best of Saltwater Lures with the SP Orca Flash Boost. Now, this is a really interesting type pencil type lure. Um, it's um, or yeah, basically like a sinking pencil and 150 millimeters long, 77 grams. It's got a spring loaded weight, so when you when you're flicking out to cast it out that spring will obviously hold that weight out so you get consistent casts and, and good long distance casts as far as you can go when you're trying to fish out or cast out to a school of fish or bait fish or whatever. It's more of an offshore one, um, but I did, didn't think it'd be too bad if you're in some brackish water. Um, basically what it does, it, it does a bit of a roll and it's got this, I'm not sure what it is, some sort of reflective material and that sort of it's got springs in it and it reflects so it just shakes and it just flashes all this light reflected light all through the water and apparently in testing was just going nuts uh, just getting smashed 
in the offshore over there. Now they go all up to a 200 mil of these things, so big suckers, big massive trebles, three times, uh, three X trebles on them. So actually proper hooks on it, so that'll go really well. Um, 23 US dollars, so a little on the XE side, but on the offshore stuff, I think you'll, uh, I think you'll find it'll go very well. Might be good for like uh, Spanish Max and stuff like that, Barracuda definitely, and any of that tuna and stuff where you get those bait schools. Um, or GTs, I think GTs would actually like this really well. And they're saying it's a, more of a sink, it's got a really fast sink, uh, and they designed it in, with in mind the bird population in the far north of America. They have a lot of birds that sort of come down and they'll go and get your baits out of the water if it doesn't sink. So basically these hit the water and they'll, I think they'll say like a, a foot a second or something. So it's got a pretty fast sink rate. Um, and then then you get, soon, and while it's falling, it's gonna flash. And they were saying a lot of the time they were getting smashed before it even got down to where they wanted to fish. So definitely worth going and check it out. That's the SP Orca Flash Boost 150 and that's from Shimano. So pretty cool. It's three wire construction too. So you're gonna, had, it's got plenty of grunt in it for those big fish, obviously designed to copper flogging as well. Um, now also the other new thing that was, and that also won best in category, obviously for saltwater lures. So that's a huge, big deal, huge market with all the different stuff in the categories. You can imagine how many things they had to pick from. So for that to win, it's obviously a decent sort of a lure. So definitely go check that out. Now I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get them and that's probably something that's worth definitely buying from overseas because it's not gonna weigh too much. Get four or five, get them sent over um, and test them out and see how they go because it might take a little bit to get to here in Australia. Um, normally it takes like early next year but if, you wanna, if you've got a comp coming up, it might be a little uh, hot tip to get one of these in the bag, tackle bag. Now also another really interesting one, we all know Power Pro here in Australia, uh, especially in barrel fishing, Power Pro is huge in the territory. Um, a lot, a lot of people use it, probably it'd have to be at least 80% of people use Power Pro that I know in, in Darwin, um, just for snags and the rocks and trees and stuff. Now they've brought out a new, there's a new deep water version and instead of 25 foot color segments, they've taken it out to 100 foot color segments and obviously for those offshore guys that are fishing in two, 300 foot of water, um, having 100 foot segments, it's just a little bit easier to sort of click in your brain how far you want to, if you want to get down and do some deep, deep jigging and bottom bouncing and stuff. Uh, really good for if you've got a charter boat and you're trying to explain it to people, well, I need you down 300 foot, that's going to be tricky to understand. If they've got, if they go down, we want you to go down three colors, three and a half colors, and then you should be at the bottom. Then they know that if they haven't gone that far, well, they're not on the bottom sometimes. And I'm mistaken, I'm no, nowhere me, far means uh, a, a gun on the out offshore stuff. And it's very tricky. If you get a big current thrown through, doesn't matter how much weight you've got on there, it's sometimes very tricky to know if you're on the bottom. It's a bit of an art form. Um, and these guys that do it regularly, it's fine for them. But when you've got customers, <clears throat> Having a simple color system at 100 foot and only having to count three different colors is really simple, especially if they're drunk. That makes it a really easy day for you and more chance your customers getting fish. So really cool. It still does have the 10 foot mar uh, markings for distance. Uh, every 10 feet, the black, the black markers, that's still the same. It's just the colors have changed to 100 feet. So I think that'll be a really big seller that comes in 65 pound, 80 pound, and 130 pound. So definitely the big offshore stuff, but I thought it was a pretty smart idea, and uh, obviously they'd be listening to customers, and especially their, uh, those big offshore boys going down at deep distance. So definitely worthwhile, and if uh, I'm assuming hopefully by next year that'll be through, but if you probably check with your local tackle store, if you or your local Shimano dealer, they'll be able to give you a bit more of an idea when that's coming through if you are a, a charter guy that it would be definitely really, really good for. So uh, yeah, could save you, make your trip and keep your customers, which will be return customers, which means more money in your pocket as well too. So very, very good. <clears throat> right, I did flick a message over to Canon to ask about weatherproofing um, for the R5 and R6. Obviously, nowadays, everything's sort of 
you've got IP ratings for your phone, your, your iPhones are IP68, they can go under the water for two, two meters for 30 minutes, blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. Uh, stereos that are waterproof that you can take fishing, all that sort of stuff. So landscapes, rain, all that. I thought, now they're bringing this out, that it might be something that they'd look into to give new people, I guess, a bit more of a consistent, yes, this is what you can and can't do with it, especially for landscape guys that are, a lot of the time rain's the best time to be out there or wet weather or near the ocean. So salt water spray and all that sort of harsh stuff and, and moisture. Um, but they got back and, and all I could get back from them was that it was basically the same weather proof or weather resistance to as the 5D Mark IV. So I tried to look at multiple sites and all I get out of the Mark IV was that was the Mark IV was the same as the 7D2, which is apparently the best that had ever been. But there's no there's no rating, there's no system, there's no it's 2,000 mils compliant. I can go online. I looked at StormTech jackets last night, and they can tell me it's a 3,000 ppm uh, rain waterproofness. But with a $5,000 camera that you're going to get take out in the rain or in bad weather, you have no idea if it's going to survive it. And if it does stuff up, you void your warranty. I think that's a little strange. I think I'd love to see all the camera companies. Um, especially ones that are catering towards outdoor, this is an outdoor sort of thing, um, surely they can come together and maybe work as a team and work out some sort of rating system that's easy for customers. When you're spending the money you're spending and you want to be able to go and do stuff, yeah, you can buy covers and all that, but we all know covers are absolute pain in the butt and no one likes them. Uh, I've got a really good Peak Design one, which I think is the best. You can clip on and off, but... Uh, you know, it's still not going to be 100%. And the last thing you want to do is risk a massive investment to get thrown in the bin because it's been soaked in water where you're trying to get that shot. And because it, it's weather resistant up to the same as another camera, that's another camera, that's another camera. That old mate said that was really good. So, yeah, it's like it, I think there should be some, like we, as I said, we've got IP68. IP67, all these ratings for weather proofiness, um, I guess you could say. Why can't we get some sort of uh, standard for digital cameras? I think that would be awesome. You can get uh, my Lumix, the panels on the Lumix, waterproof. That's waterproof, you can take it under. Um, obviously, with interchangeable lenses, that's tricky, but I think one of one good feature I'm looking for in my next camera when I purchase it, and I'm hopeful the M50 will be that, is the fact that I can, if it's light rain or splashes or anything like that, I can take it out and feel comfortable that my camera's not going to get destroyed. So yeah, anyway, that's my thought, and yeah, I tried to touch base, and it look, I don't think it's just a camera thing. I think it's an industry thing. I'd love to see them give us some sort of a better or a standardized system to tell us about the water resistance of the gear is paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for. So I think it'd be really good. Uh, it could make it an easy, easy choice and it'd be a really good discernible uh, choice for customers to know that they can use it. If you're a landscape photographer, well, I guess that's sort of what I base myself as. Um, I know that I've, I feel comfortable and a lot safer knowing that if this has got a, say, an IP, IPWR resistance or, or just a WR resistance, that, yeah, light rain is okay. If it's heavy rain over, say, 10 mils an hour, well, then, yeah, it's no good. I'm sh there should be something. I'm sure nowadays, like 2021, like we can put friggin' satellites in the moon, in the orbit every month, or well, Elon Musk can, but we can't tell you how water resistant the camera is or make them water resistant so they can handle that. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's probably a better feature than say an 8K or a 10K or whatever it's coming next. I think you'd sell a lot more if they're more robust and reliable and solid. And also good for resale value. If you know it's a really good solid water resistant camera, well then you know you're gonna be able to sell it because it's not gonna 
the uh, old age is not going to affect it as much. But anyway, um, yeah, so yeah, couldn't find anything, unfortunately. You get that. Now, um, last but not least, just a quick day today. Nothing really huge out in there. Um, um, the other day, um, they're the guys we know, Apple's got the ARM technology with their new chips. Well, the company ARM that have developed this technology to make these chips, to make them smaller for mobile computing, um, <clears throat> is basically selling up. It's owned by a Japanese company called SoftBank. Uh, for whatever reason, they've put it on the market to sell. Obviously, it, I think it would be a bit, and I think a few people have said it, and I'd probably tend to agree with them, that Apple or Google or Android buying it is a bad move because then they, or Microsoft buying that company means that they will own the, the uh, that technology, uh, which means it'll become a just a one band technology, which is not good. It's better if it's owned by someone else and then every company can use it. So now Windows, Microsoft is looking into ARM and there's probably they're probably going to have to start developing it because Apple's going that way. They're going to start making it. So I think probably SoftBank's thought, well, you know, these guys, this is going to be big. Uh, this is a really good time to like double it. The share price has gone up. Uh, they're expecting profits to just go through the roof now that Apple's going that way. So whoever's going to buy it's going to have to pay a pretty penny. Um, but then whoever does buy it, hopefully they're an independent company um, that will then allow everyone to sort of use that technology at, a, at a, an equal and fair price. Um, obviously they need to make money as well but as an equal and fair price to everyone the same for all and then that technology can grow which will mean it just basically better for us as consumers if we get better technology better mobile computing so yeah pretty interesting one and it's i think it's something sort of uh i want to keep abreast of i think it's important and hopefully uh Whoever does buy this company, as I said, it's not a big, big company. I think it should, should be allowed to be bought by people that are using the tech. I think it somehow needs to stay independent if possible. So, see how we go. Other than that, I did have another look at um, those Broncos, man. They look, the more I look at them, the more I want one. <laughs> and the more I know I can't get one. So, well, we're not going to get them in Australia. They look really good. I looked at... Uh, yeah, a few of the, there's a few videos out um, now pumping around from them. Uh, they've done really, really well with them. I think they've come. They're going to sell a heap of them. Even uh, with no electric and no hybrid, I think they're going to sell a heap. It's really, really nice, and they just grow on you. The more you look at them, the more you want them, and the features. It's just insane. Even like the dash, they put a rail on the dash where you can mount GoPros and everything. It's like a camera rail, so you can easily mount everything you want, action cams, while you're going bush bashing and stuff like that. So like just stuff like that, they've done a really good job. So yeah, it was a bit of fun fun thing to watch in my lunch hour. So yeah, cool. But right, yeah, that's it, Thursday. See you for Friday tomorrow. Week has flown past. Always does that first week when you're going back to work midweek. So yeah, makes a big difference. Right here, guys, I'll see you all again tomorrow. Hope you all have a good Thursday. Stay safe, and we'll see you for the end of the week shows. Cool bananas. Right here, wherever you're going that way, that way, I'll catch you in the morrow. Peace.